trying to do it shoot around today when they were listening to Taylor Swift. Their coach came over and he was lighthearted and friendly as well. He said, look, volleyball is a game of runs. We have got to just let them have that run, put it away, and now we go back on our run. We have to have a run here and put the pressure back on the Longhorns. They get the first point of the set. Eckerman gets a swing, overpass. Haley sends it right to Gray. Collins, the back set. Great though, Sarame stuffed. And the Babu that time got a good swing at it. Much better connection, if you, as you pointed out, Karch, with Chloe Collins. Yep, you can see that she hit this with a nearly straight elbow, so the set is higher. She can take a swing, and she has a nice one-on-one -on -one opportunity. That's where Texas has been having all its success, not out on the left side. I think one of the keys for BYU is the way they have their lineup set up. They can have either Jen Hampson or Alexa Gray or both, as is the case now, in the front row. All but one rotation, and that one rotation costs them big time. Hampson in the back, Gray out of the game. Dalton and Bell now check on, so the second setter returns for Texas. Sean Olmstead looks on the AVCA National Coach of the Year. He's trying to join a very short list of players that have won national championships and then coached teams to a national championship. Dalton looking for Eckerman. Over the block, no touch point BYU. Who did we come up with? John Spira on the men's side, Michael Seeley on the women's side. And we told you that Olmstead, his dad was Karch's coach in high school. There's Sean as a baby in Karch's arms uh, during high school. And then Sean as a national champion in 2003 and in 2004 as a Libro at BYU. That is the last national championship, by the way, that BYU has won. So he's trying to bring another one back. They have 10 national titles. Hampson tried to get down on the floor to bring it up. Point Texas. And Olson had, had some really special words for his dad, who, of course, was a great coach in his own right and is also a wonderful referee. Works a lot of college men and women and the rest of his family for all the, all the support growing up with those six sisters of his. Back set, Hampson. Blocked by McCage, back to Hampson. She'll go again. Rejected by Neal. The other way, Nobles. Good get by Dalton. Miscommunication, free ball Cougars. Yeah, Haley Eckerman's got to realize that the hitter she's trying to set is on the ground. That's the wrong side to set it. And then Texas gets into the net, point BYU. Hampson stays up front for BYU as Gray rotates out. The slide to McCage got it down the line. And here comes Abagu back in. It starts with a nice pass from Amy Neal, who Coach Elliott credits. Much like two years ago when they won with Shardar McNeil, she's the glue that holds this team together, makes lots of good contacts, and she sets up their offense. Yeah, he thought she should have been an All-American. She did not make the list this year. But we have, in our two semifinal matchups tonight, eight of the 14 first-team All-Americans. Between these two teams, Stanford and Princeton. That is a good, tough serve on the court. Off the block from Bell now, Point Texas. Missed out on their run in 2011, a knee injury. Missed out on the NCAA tournament. Came back and was a key cog in their championship run in 2012. Along with Ackerman. Hampson gets another kill. 17 yeah. for her. Coach Elliott said he'd never seen anyone, and the doctors said they'd never seen anyone like Bell come back, at least in the University of Texas Athletic Department, come back so fast from an injury like that.
doubles. Blown right back. Neal got it down. Smart play by Neal. She can see some space between those blockers. Between Robin Hardy, Robin Hardy and the middle blocker. Boswell for BYU. Collins serving. They serve at the Libro. The pass to Robbins Hardy and the kill. That's Tamber Nobles. And you know why that was so huge? Because that's the rotation that gave up point after point after point. And now Alexa Grace checks back in. At BYU in much better position when they have Gray available and Hampson rather than just one of them in that last rotation. Gray and Hampson have 32 of their 45 kills in the match. They pick up another point and go up one. So if you're a BYU fan, that was huge that they did not give up a single point yeah. in that rotation with Gray out and Hampson backcourt. Meanwhile, Eckerman, who is not in right now, continues to hit zero for Texas as the Longhorns get the point. And here comes Haley back in. Coach Olmstead is wondering who actually pushed the ball off whom and out of bounds. It looked like both players were trying to push it out of bounds off each other. Joan Park and Mary Blaylock, the officials today. Green! Hit high hands, point BYU. With no approach, that was such a <laughs> quick play with the cover by BYU. You see that Gray had no approach, just a standing jump that still puts it away. Even here in the fourth set, if BYU wins it, it is over. They move on to the finals. If Texas wins it, we go to a fifth set. Got to get to 25 by two. Great. Off the block. And then the ricochet goes down. Two hitters, Gray at one side, the left side in front of the center, and Hanson behind. And they're on as they are one hitting 500, the other hitting almost 250, but 34 kills between them. This is a very dangerous team. Eckerman goes down on Morney to keep it alive. Parker trying to set Hanson, all she could do is tip. Now a chance for Texas back outside to Eckerman with the swing. Parker is there. Gray, set by Hampson, dug up in the back, the quick to McCage, Hampson again, good save by Neal, Eckerman, got it, net violation on BYU. At times, Texas has talked about trying to speed up its offense. Trying not to set what some people call moon balls out to the left side. But I think they might get some more motivation to speed up the offense a little when they see how the block of BYU has been able to set up so well on this slow, high ball offense. It's been hard to stop Hampson now with 18 kills in their region semifinal win over Florida State. A career high 30 kills on 63 swings for Hampson. Wow, Bell put that one down in a hurry. I like how Bell goes and takes a swing anyway. BYU should have stuck with this play, but they drop off and they only get one blocker up. That's a great stuff opportunity lost. And off the fingertips, slowed down by Texas. Neal outside, and the block for Jennifer Hampson. That is their first block since the second set. Yep, since the end of the second, it's really been Texas dominating at the net. Dalton looks 
to McCain, sliding behind. Nobles gets the kill. to the center. Look at Texas scrambling to get a set, to get a swing. And they get the point out of it. McCage. It's a really nice set by Cat Brooks. You can see her having to weave through all the trees in that forest just to get there and put it up. She really saved that play for Texas. Orange looking to even it up. Nobles took a little something off and it was just right. Yeah, and we've seen that on multiple occasions tonight. Good scouting by BYU to see that Texas is not reacting to that, what we call it a roll shot. You start your swing and it looks the same and slow it down, and it lands about 12, 13 feet. Hitting numbers both subpar tonight for these two teams. Both blocks have been so good. And now serving. That's the kind of serve BYU wants. Ooh, trouble. Free ball Cougars. Robbins Hardy goes to work. The back set Boswell with the tip. Another problem with the pass. Point BYU. Timeout Texas as they fall behind by three for a record seventh national championship. And we heard from Coach Wise after Stanford beat the number eight seed Florida in that regional final that she had never had somebody, had an opponent control the serving of Florida so well. Very high level performance by Stanford. Penn State will go into that match, by the way, as one of the top serving teams in the country. They led the nation in aces this year with the best server in the country, Micah Hancock, who is back home in Oklahoma, as is Stanford's middle, Inky Ajanaku. They both played in high school here in the state. They will be uh, two of the featured performers in our second semifinal. BYU can win the match here in the fourth. Texas trying to extend it to a fifth and final set. And this is the rotation to keep an eye on for BYU. They've just given up one point. The, the, the last time they received serve, they got it right back. No points. But in set number three, they bled a ton of points. No Alexa Gray on the court and a poor pass. And now Hampson can't take a swing, so opportunity for Texas. Collins. Oh, so there's a couple of points for the Horns. Keep an eye on this. The choice is for BYU. They could bring in a third outside hitter. They could uh, try to set Hampson out of the back row, and they can try and call a timeout. Those are really the things they have available to try and stop a streak of points for their opponent. Nobles takes a swing. Cat Brooks was there, the defensive specialist. Neal, without any block up, it's dug, and Boswell is stuck. Three unanswered for Texas. Nicely executed by Ibagu. She does what we call a commit block there. She just said, I'm going to block one-on-one -on, -one on that opposing quick hitter for BYU. Gets her hands over in a good spot. Look for Hanson out of the back court. Here she comes, and that will end the run. And it's BYU. Gets uh, even on the scoreboard. So overall, BYU got to be happy that they didn't give up too much damage and none the first time they, they faced that. And now Gray returns up front. Collins is set to Obago, who tipped right to Boswell. And the block from Boswell. See how low that first set was to Abagu. That gave another blocking opportunity for BYU. And they take advantage. Boswell at the net. Hampson sets it out to Gray. Looking 
possession for both sides without the setter getting the set. Now Collins just plays it across. Here comes Robbins Hardy in the middle of Boswell. Ooh, I think they would have set Alexa Gray up. Yeah. And the block is there. But Boswell what, and Gray. What do I know? You're the answer to team coach. Forget about it. Let Gray block <laughs> instead of put it to the floor. <laughs> Hitting. Nice move by BYU. Boswell and Gray up for the stuff. BYU up 18-16. America with plenty of confidence <laughs> heading to the Olympics in Brazil with Karch at the helm. <laughs> Sophomore who was a red shirt. Both getting their first extensive duty in a national semifinal tonight. Collins looking to Obaga, stuff twice. How about Boswell? First she had help from two other blockers. They had three blockers on the first quick, but the second one, she's all alone. And did you see how she dove to her left, knowing that that's where the attack was going to go? And that's exactly what Texas has been going with after that, the softer shot off the quick attack. Abagu! Got it down. Point Texas. Well, as Holly mentioned, Coach Elliott questioning some of the setting choices, so now they're just going quick as much as they, as they possibly can, especially to Obagu, even when they, she had three blockers in front of her. She stays up along the front line, along with Eckerman now. Neil serving. Robbins Hardy. That one was tight to the net. She'll get another chance here. Going to Gray, tried to cut it, and a little too sharp. The Libro will have to set. It's Hampson out of the back, and it's into the net. And that was one of the poorest possessions of the night for BYU. And they'll take a timeout as a result. You're right. All three contacts not going where they wanted to. The pass way off the net. The set not going where Hampson needed. And then Hampson's got to get the ball over the court and give her block over the net and into the court to give her block a chance to make a move. Easy point for Texas. Great a strong timeout call by Olmstead. Got to help them reset. Well, the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship will continue with the final match on Saturday night, December 20th. That'll come your way at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 89 NCAA championships. The rally cry all week for BYU. Why not us? Why not an unseeded team? They are just the third to reach the semis. Michigan and Santa Clara both lost. So BYU is trying to become the first team in the 34-year history of this tournament to play for a national championship without being seeded. And the coach, like all the fan base for BYU, why not us? Stash, looking for some good luck here in the NCAA semifinals. The code says it's got to stay above the lip. They hope they can carve national championship into the stash if they can win it all. Over to Holly Rowe. Well, in that last time out, the stash said to his team, hey, let's put the pressure back on Texas. We're making too many unforced errors right here. They have a lot to deal with with us. We're serving well, we're passing well, we're blocking well. Let's put all the pressure back on them. Eliminate the errors. Alexa Gray gets the kill. And really, the key in that streak of errors is if Gray had hit that one ball over the net and not off it and out of bounds, they wouldn't have given up those next three points. But BYU still only five points away from this massive upset. And Texas, of course, would love to force a fifth game. BYU not being in a position like that in the NCAA semifinals. It has only happened once in the history of the national semifinals in 2008, Stanford rallied from down 0-2 to beat this Texas side, and now Texas trying to do it to BYU. And remember, lots of the Texas offense has been Obagu, who's in the backcourt, Obagu serving with a good serve. And an ace! And now Texas is three points from the set. from Parker and a timeout BYU. Ooh, 
Rebels have ever won the title. Six for Stanford, six for Penn State. They are coming up next. BYU trying to stay in the hunt for their first national championship as Texas tries to force a fifth set. Collins to Ackerman. Robbins Hardy looks to Gray. The All-Americans both getting a swing. Now it's Hampson out of the back. Got it. Horns couldn't protect line. BYU gets another swing after confusion early and the good swing by Gray. So where does Texas go offensively with Obagu off and a poor pass? It's Eckerman. Eckerman's trip right to Hampson. It's all even. So even if Hampson doesn't jump that high, when you're six foot seven, you can practically stand there and block that ball. You got to keep it away from her. Collins, nice move by just Hansen. blocked. Now it's Eckerman off the block. Here comes BYU to Gray. McCoy covers Eckerman again. Got it by the block. Ackerman with a much better, remember the previous play, she tipped it into the block of Hanson, that time hitting high through the middle blocker's hands, finding some daylight. Texas two points away from making this go to that tiebreaker. Gray on the other side this time for the kill. And now Gray will go out. So both Gray and Abadu for their sides. But Hampson still on the court and in the front row, both as a blocker and a hitter for BYU, and here she is blocking. And it is now match point BYU. Sometimes it's so fast you have to go based on what you hear because yeah. you can hear the ball make a little bit of contact. And let me correct myself from just a second ago. It would have been a set point for Texas to force a fifth, and now it swings back to another match point for BYU. Trying to become the first unseeded team to ever reach the finals, and it would be a first in school history for the Cougars. Texas would love to win this point back because Obagu gets back in the game as soon as they win this. And if they can force it just a little more, they'll get that rotation where Hampson's in the back and Gray is backcourt and Gray would be off. 
Sierra Parker serving for the match. Dalton, the back set, McCage has it blocked, kept alive by Texas. Hampson for the win, that's sent back. Back to Hampson, another swing, and she's got it. Seated BYU will play for the national championship.